Today I'm going to show you Rayong Old Town. Well, in essence, it's one road, round about a kilometre long. The first road in the region, and in fact, all these wooden houses and buildings, they're actually built onto a river parallel to this road. And that's where Rayong started. It was a hub of commerce. It was a hub of trading in this area a hundred years ago. The banks, the merchants, the shops, everything was down here, but it's all long, long gone. But this road has survived and all these wooden buildings are still here and they're all still in use. Still the same as a hundred years ago. It's like a living, working museum. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit, a few of the buildings, a few of the shops, a few of the museums, some of the restaurants, the coffee shops, kind of like the new things as well that have sprung up to add a current relevance to this road. It's quick and easy to walk down. It's not gonna take you long. You can do this in an hour, two hours if you're gonna stop a coffee shop or a restaurant, something like that. But you can capture the whole vibe of when Rayong started and it all started here. That's the amazing thing. This was the first road in the province. This building here in fantastic condition in kind of a Sino-Portuguese architecture style is another one of the landmarks of this road. The condition is absolutely beautiful. Those verandas, all those wooden shutters, the little roof there, absolutely amazing in perfect condition. And on this side again, we've got more of this style. And what I like is every few meters down this road, you've got little alleyways that run just 50 meters or so down to the river. This one is that one. The back half of this really old classic Sino-Portuguese style building has been turned into a restaurant, cafe style. And you can see like the new glass and everything, it's been blended in really nicely and they've cleaned up all these wooden shutter doors. This building here that today is a restaurant was originally a rice mill. And again, this feeds into the whole commerce trading hub going on on this road with the river where the goods went right behind. This amazing wooden building behind a wall here. And in fact, before I start talking about it, just look at this plant hanging over the wall. Anyway, this is Bunsiri House, which is one of the famous landmarks of this road. It's an amazing wooden building with wooden shuttered windows painted in a pale blue. It gives a whole colonial vibe to it. But now it's all locked up. It can't go in. And if you listen to that dog as well, I don't think the welcoming guests, but we can see over the fence, this was a big expansive building. And I'm guessing from the name of the flour mill and the name of this house, this was the owners of the flour mill lived here and they walked 50 meters to go to work. And we've got a lady here and she is mixing something up that I have no idea at all what it is. One of the big standouts on Yonjinda Road is this Chinese shrine. And you can see the walls are really ornately decorated all around it. You can see these gates and the pagoda style, absolutely beautiful, which is apparently dedicated to a goddess of the sea. So it's going back to the original days. And you can see there's a lot of amazing murals on the walls. But these guys are not that friendly in here. I went to park in here and although there's a ton of space, they chased me out. And then when I came back in with my camera on foot, they said, I can't go and look inside the shrine. So anyway, if you can make a better impression on them than me, maybe you get to see inside. But even if you don't, they let me walk around outside and you can see all these murals. They look absolutely amazing. Right next to the temple, and in fact, part of the temple complex, we have some really, really cool street art here, tracing the Chinese immigrants coming in here. And you can see the sailing boat, the man on his raft with the fish in the basket, man carrying the goods on his back, a rickshaw, a well, and what I like is they've actually put a rope here as well to give it a little bit of extra feeling. A lady washing clothes, banana tree, and here we've got a shop as well. A man pouring a liquid, making food, making drink, and here's another guy. He's sitting there drinking his tea with a teapot. There's a gecko peeping in there. We've got a dog there. We've got a lady with baskets of food, and then we've got some religious artifacts on the end here. Really beautifully done, really nice wall that. There's also a museum on this road, letting you step back into the history of Yomjinda Road. Although you're really halfway there, just walking down it. But anyway, let's go inside and take a look. 
And here we've got cabinets with all sorts of crockery and dishes and bowls, old TVs on top. We've got a lot of typewriters and picture frames here, more TVs, old tape recorder, more radios along here. Got watches, telephones, cameras, weighing scales, jewelry, and up there we've got oil lanterns, more statues, more radios, more ornaments, giant shelves. And over here, got another cabinet with all sorts of glasses, more weighing scales, more jugs, food containers, more typewriters, irons, all these things from decades ago, and not a person about at all. And then I'm just gonna climb up here and see where this goes. These have gotta be the steepest, narrowest stairs I've ever been up in my whole life. And here we have a bedroom from years ago. We've got an old TV there, typewriter, telephone, an abacus, we've got a mannequin there, table and chair in the corner. And look at this old wooden bed and a load of suitcases. Man, this is how they lived before aircon. And I'd also say, these guys are gonna have a lot of mosquitoes in here and not be able to keep them out. So let's go through this door. And this door has a back garden. So this big mural gives us a really good feel for what life was like long time ago. There's also a lot of old photos on the walls here showing life from years and years ago. But one of the problems with this road is everything is in Thai. They're expecting Thai tourists. They're not expecting foreigners. So you gotta do a bit of guesswork when you're here. But anyway, they say a picture tells a story and all these pictures tell quite a story. And down here we have a pontoon bridge across the river. So I'm gonna take a walk onto that. Check out the views. And again, it's all ornate and fishing boats which are synonymous with Rayong. So we can actually walk right out onto the river on this pontoon bridge, which takes you across to the other side. But I wanna just go out into the middle, get a feel for this river. Now, obviously, boats can't get through there. But once upon a time, this would be a bustling hub of boats, cargo boats, carrying goods, carrying supplies, carrying anything you can think of that could go by boat in those days, up and down this waterway. And now we can get a bit of a feel for the river community, all the houses leading down to the river, but nothing happens now. Now this is sleeping, trade, commerce, everything has gone right on the end of the old street. Give or take a couple of shops, well give or take a motorcycle repair shop, which I'll show you in a minute, is Slurp Cafe. It's a coffee shop, and like everything else on this street, it backs onto the river. So this coffee shop has taken full advantage of that and they put seats along the riverside. So really, this is slow pace of life. You sit here, you drink your coffee and you watch the river go by. And then the coffee shop is kind of made semi-container style. So it all blends in really well. As well as sitting on the riverbank and watching the river flow past, they've also built a balcony on top of the roof of the coffee shop. So you can sit up here and you can watch the river go past at a slightly different angle. Right next to Slurp Coffee, we have got this incredible old restaurant. Looks absolutely amazing, looks so original. I mean, like this leaf roof and all this wood. It's, it's worth coming here to eat just for the ambience. Absolutely amazing. This shop is really famous for its food. It's a family tradition shop that's been here for 35 years. And they basically do three foods. They do cow soy, which is like a northern style food. They do pad thai. And then what I've ordered, Canom Packard. And again, walk into this road and time has stood still. In amongst all these shuttered up old buildings with the grills down, there are buildings that have been repurposed into like cafes, into coffee shops, into arts and craft shops. Kind of not lost the original style, but they've repurposed them made them into something new. So there is kind of new life, paying respects to the heritage, blended into this road. Every 50, 100 meters or so, there's little alleyways head down to the river. The river and this community are indivisible. The community grew up originally on the river and then the roads came along. But the part the river plays in this community is never forgotten and it feels like it's part of it all the way along. And you get all these little alleyways leading straight down the river. This one, it's got this kind of nice artwork at the end here that fits in well, but I think they put that there in case anyone comes down here 
forget to apply the brakes. And just look at that for a doorway. That has been around for quite a few decades. And I am making a friend. Here we have an art and craft gallery. And what I like is they've used a lot of repurposed items, recycled items from Rayong that are synonymous. Like all these fishing parts here, they've been turned into artworks. And this thing here, I think it's meant to be a cactus plant. It's been made out of recycled plastic bottles. Look like seven up bottles. Really coolly done. I'm gonna take a look in here as well and see what's going on. You can see there's murals on the wall and there's a lot of stuff that has all been recycled and repurposed. All this old driftwood has been turned into mobiles, turned into wind chimes. We've got old ropes from the ships, from the fishing boats. And you can see everything here has just been reused and recycled. And we've got again a lot more photos and pictures of the heritage of Rayong. And here is another amazingly old shop. And to be honest, I'm not even sure what they are selling here. It looks like they're selling kind of old books, old papers, but they are faded with age. And this whole shop looks like it was about 50 years ago, except everything was faded with the sunlight tucked away here being reclaimed by nature is one of these big old wooden carts that they used to use years and years ago pulled by oxen they're kind of narrow with these high sides and just behind we've got a stack of wooden boats narrow boats almost like canoes from years ago that people used to row around in and nature is taking them all back and over here we have a water buffalo one of the symbols of thailand and the butt of a lot of jokes as well. And on the other side, we have two cows. There's also a really big market building on Yom Jinda Road, which actually goes right through to the next road. But today it is not in operation. You can see where all the sellers work down there. And we can walk through and you can see some of the tables where you would sit to eat your food are pretty cool. But this looks very quiet and I think it probably is only used on special occasions now. But we have walked right through to the next road here. And here is a cafe with a tuk-tuk outside. The tuk-tuk really, one of the symbols of Thailand. And that one looks like it's been there for quite a long time. The paint is really cracked and flaking off and it's all gone there. And I want to visit this cafe because it's got like a really nice balcony upstairs, but it's shut today. To be honest, like everything else in this road, it seems to be shut. It's getting on for 4.30 now. There's actually people setting up booths here, getting a bit of life back into the streets. And maybe once the sun goes down and the heat goes, we're going to get a bit of more life into the street. Right on the end of the Old Town Street, or this end, we have another new cafe. Quad Bar and Cafe, Quad being bottle in Thai, so kind of appropriate name. But it's opposite that I really want to show you because this motorcycle repair shop is absolutely amazing. Look at this classic Honda scooter with Japanese plates on it. Absolutely amazing. And all these old scooters here gathering dust for years and all these piles of parts. But what I really like is over here because we have got chairs and a table made out of motorcycle wheels i've seen chairs made out of everything car tires you name it but i've never seen them made out of motorcycle wheels that looks absolutely amazing and here's a guy at work rebuilding engines unbelievable this place it's like a history lesson coming down here so one thing to mention as well if you're coming by car like I am. You don't have to worry about parking if you come down the Old Town Road. There is a huge, massive, open, free car park right on this road. So I'm going to end my look at Yom Jinder Road with a rickshaw and a restaurant. It's kind of a strange place. It's really untouched. Most of the places look very original. And in one way, that's nice. You're walking back in time. But in the other way, it's just dead. And you feel like it's a missed opportunity. This could be a really thriving, buzzing street, bustling street. Really something that Rayong could be known for. Because Rayong is just kind of a quiet city. But it's just stuck 
in its time warp there's a few cafes there's a few arts and crafts places popped up here and there so there is some life but not much so it's kind of a little bit strange why it's all like this but maybe the people want it like that maybe they don't want to become like a tourist attraction people wandering up and down gawping maybe they just want to stay in their old life their old ways what they've been doing all their lives quiet and peacefully so who knows for me i think it's a shame because this could really be something that was really put on the map for rayong and something that could be really bustling and really lively in a lot of the old towns places like phuket of course a lot of the old towns in malaysia as well they've really revitalized themselves and made themselves into something modern and happening and thriving and a new lease of life but these guys clearly they don't really want that they just want to do i think what they've been doing all their lives in peace run on that I'm going to end.